Welcome to Foundational You with Dr. Dean Hackett, the home of biblical teaching and cultural impact. We are so glad that you joined us for today's podcast. You can find out more about Dr. Dean, read his blog, and find more episodes at fdeanhackett.com. Now for today's episode. The Lord Jesus Christ quoted the prophet Isaiah one day in a sermon when he was in, in uh, uh, his hometown of Nazareth. His quote was, The Spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He has sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives and recovery of sight to the blind, to set at liberty them who are oppressed. I want you to notice twice in there, Jesus referred to liberty. He said to proclaim liberty to the captives. He said to set at liberty those who are oppressed. He finished that by saying, and to proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord. Jesus also said when he was talking to a crowd one day, this is recorded in the Gospel of John chapter 8, verses 31 and 32. He said, If you abide in my word, you are my disciples indeed, and ye shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. The Apostle Paul quoted or wrote in his epistles some very similar statements to the church at Galatia in chapter 5, verse 1. He wrote, Stand fast in the liberty with which Christ has made you free. One translation says, by which Christ has made you free. And then in his second epistle to the church at Corinth, in chapter 3, verse 17, he wrote, Now the Lord is the Spirit, and where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. Now the Lord is the Spirit, and where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. Have you noticed the connection between the presence of the Lord and God's truth and liberty? You see, liberty, that that beautiful life of freedom from domination, intimidation, and control, that beautiful land where we live free from the the constant control and manipulation of a domineering and controlling government. You know, God's original design for man, for the whole human race, is that they live in liberty. That was his original design. Governments and national control that keeps people in bondage and in slavery that keeps people living under the oppression of a domineering, controlling, manipulating uh, dictator or government. Those are all spawned out of the powers of darkness and out of the controls of hell. Almighty God created us to live in liberty. Liberty is not granted to us by the federal government, by the Supreme Court, by the Constitution of the United States, by the President or the Senate or the the House of Representatives. Liberty is not granted to a people by their governor or the state constitution or the state legislature. Mankind does not grant liberty to another. Liberty is a gift from Almighty God Himself. Almighty God created you and I to live in liberty. That's his gift to us. It comes from him. And people will only live in true freedom and true liberty when they are under the headship of Almighty God. When And have you noticed in the history of Israel, every time they walked in complete surrender to the Lord Jesus Christ, they lived at liberty. 
It was only when they began to pursue other gods and they turned their back on God, then they came under the power and the control of man manipulative kind of government, controlling and domineering kind of government. Do you remember in the book of 1 Samuel, chapters 8, 9, and 10, the people come to the prophet Samuel and say, we want a king over us like the nations around us. Catch that, like the nations around us, those nations that did not know God, those nations that did not serve God, those nations that had domineering, controlling, manipulative, intimidating kings and dictators. We want a king like them. They were living under a theocracy. They were living under that, but now they wanted a king. And God says to Samuel, Samuel, you're gonna grant them their request, but tell them what it will be like under a king. And when you read what God said through the prophet Samuel about being under a king, it all he is saying, you're going to come under, you're going to come under the control of a man, of a human being, and they're going to be dominating, they're going to be controlling, they're going to be intimidating, they're going to be manipulative. You're going to lose your liberty because liberty is a gift from God to mankind. It only comes from Him. You know, our founding fathers knew and understood that. When they wrote the Declaration of Independence, they said this. They, they, they said um, uh, that we hold these truths to be self-evident. We hold these truths to be self-evident. That what? That, that uh, uh, they are granted to us by our Creator, that all men are created equal with certain inalienable rights that are granted by our Creator. Among these are life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. We hold these truths to be self-evident, that all men are created equal and are endowed by our Creator with certain inalienable rights. Among these are life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. Our founding fathers knew and understood that liberty is granted not by a government, but by Almighty God. The love for liberty and its precious and priceless treasure was never more eloquently spoken than by the words of one of our founding fathers. He was a member of the Virginia House of Burgesses. And on March 23, 1775, the Second Virginia Convention was meeting at St. John's Church rather than at the Virginia House of Burgess in uh, Williamsburg because the tensions had become so extreme between the colonists uh, and Great Britain. Appeal after appeal had been sent to the British Parliament and to King George VI. Excuse me, it was not King George VI. He is, we're going to talk about him in just a few moments, but it was King George. But to no avail, their appeal to the, to the, to the Parliament was of no avail. Taxes had become unbearably uh, uh, and the legislative control had become suffocating. They were being uh, uh, required to house soldiers in private homes. The whole situation was, was out of control. And yet the colonists had no representation in the parliament or in the House of Commons. So standing to address the convention, Patrick Henry began with these words, quote, For my own part, I consider it nothing less than a question of freedom or slavery. It is only in this way that we can hope to arrive at truth and fulfill the great responsibility which we hold to God and our country. 
And he continued, Sir, we are not weak if we make a proper use of the means which the God of nature has placed in our power. Three millions of people armed in the holy cause of liberty and such a country as that which we possess are invincible by any force which our enemy can send against us. Besides, sir, we will not fight our battle alone. There is a just God who presides over the destinies and fights, uh, uh, who, who, who presides over the destinies of nations and who will raise up friends to fight our battle for us. The battle, sir, is not to the strong alone. It is to the vigilant, the active, and the brave. Is life so dear or peace so sweet as to be purchased at the price of chains and slavery? Hear that again. Is life so dear or peace so sweet as to be purchased at the price of chains and slavery? Let me pause here for a moment because that is a question that we have to answer right now. We must answer this question. Is our life so dear and the relative peace in which we live here in our country, we are living in, in a prosperity that the world and history has never known. But are our Nikes and our Xbox games and our automobiles and, and our home theaters and our bank accounts and our ability to have whatever we want to have, just put it on the card. Is our life so dear and so sweet that we are willing to give up our liberty and allow, allow chains of slavery to slowly wrap around us. Well, dear ones, actually, we're doing that. While we, while we sleep in our lethargy, while we sleep in our hedonism, the chains of liberty, excuse me, the freedoms of liberty are slowly being taken away from us as the chains of despotism, as the chains of slavery are slowly wrapping around us. Patrick Henry said it so well. Let me finish his statement because it is so important to you and to me. He said this, Is life so dear or peace so sweet as to be purchased at the price of chains and slavery? Forbid it, Almighty God. I know not what course others may take, but as for me, give me liberty or give me death. Every generation and every nation has faced the danger and the belligerence of those enemies of liberty. Men who would seek to dominate and control for their own power and ego. Egypt, Babylon, Assyria, Medes and Persians, Greece, Rome, the Khans of, of Mongolia, Napoleon, Bonaparte, the Third Reich, and Adolf Hitler. Every generation and every nation has faced the danger and the, and the belligerence of those enemies of true liberty. We're going to continue this series over the next couple of podcasts as we talk about liberty and Israel's future. We are facing these dangers right now, even as we speak. I hope you'll join me in the next podcast as we continue looking at the dangers that we're facing and the dangers that Israel is facing right now. 
God bless you. Thank you for joining me on Foundational You today. I am Dr. Dean. I'm glad you joined me. I hope you'll click like. I hope you'll click on that little bell and subscribe and share with others this series of Liberty and Israel's Future. God bless you. Thank you for joining me. Thank you for joining us today. This Christ-centered biblical training is a ministry of Spirit Life Ministries. We hope that you are blessed by this podcast and share it with your friends and colleagues. For more information or questions for Dr. Dean, please contact us at the website fdeanhackett.com.